morning, everybody, and thank you for being here. All right, I'd like to welcome Mr. Steve Leonard, the Executive Deputy Chairman of IDA, Professor Arnold de Mayer, our President of SMU, Ms. Tang Feng Yi, who's the Deputy Director and Head of Strategic Development for our Monetary Authority of Singapore, Ms. Ong Hui Si, who's the CEO of the International Banking, of, of, of the Institute of Banking and Finance. Sorry about that. And distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, those of you from the banks, from the vendors, from other parts of the financial services uh, industry. A warm welcome to SMU, especially to those who it's your first time on campus. And thanks for joining us for the launch of the Financial IT Academy at SMU. So you'll be witnessing the launch of what we call the Financial IT Academy at SMU. Now this is going to be integral to Singapore's national effort to expand both the number and the quality of the size of the IT professional workforce in the financial services industry. Back in the 28th of May, there was a dinner for the financial service industry. Uh, it was held by the Institute of Banking and Finance. And then MAS board member, who's also our acting minister for culture, community, and youth, Mr. Lawrence Wong. So at that dinner, he announced that IDA, together in partnership with MAS, had designated SMU to be the lead provider to design and deliver quality training programs for IT job roles in the financial service sector in Singapore so that we get professionals with skills and capabilities in both financial sector and IT because we need these kind of people to drive the design, development, and deployment of innovative solutions for the financial sector. So what FITA will do FITA is what we call this initiative, the Financial IT Academy. We'll create distinct pathways for skill development and capacity uh, building in the banking, finance, and IT sectors. All right. Now we're working very closely with the Institute of Banking and Finance, because they run the certification scheme in the financial service industry, and with IDA, because they run the certification and other manpower development for the Infocom zone. Uh, industry, and we have to do this together with the banks and the IT service providers because it is a national initiative. Right? Our emphasis is on working people, <coughs> professionals, mid career professionals, as well as people who may be in the earlier stage of just starting their career. All right? um, and then if we do this right, it will enhance Singapore's position as the leading financial hub in Asia because as some people have commented, without technology, there is no bank. Right? So this is poured out how the banks operate. Right. And then we'll explain in a moment about the way in which we integrate the technology with the operations, processes, and service innovation. In the spirit of something about education, training, competency, development, Professor Miller will not deliver his first lecture. The quiz will not be that hard. Okay, so let me just leave the script and just show you a few visuals that you think will help you understand. I'm teasing about this, but actually, when you try and teach people things, you actually have to show it to them in multiple forms of representation. Some things you get with your ears, something you get with your eyes, and you sort of have to have both of those things. All right, I'll come back to that theme in a minute. So as we said a few times already, develop financial IT manpower for Singapore's FS sector. Now obviously we have to work together with the vendors for technology training. You have to be careful in banking about using the word for banking because it means something very particular in banking but the core kind of technology that's used within financial service institutions. And what's really essential is this issue of integrating the understanding of the technology with the operations and processes, risk and compliance with threats to everything, the business and IT system management issues, 
and service innovation issues. Because let's face it, the people involved with these kinds of um, IT work and process and operations work are always the ones who are the integral parts of the change initiatives. Now, we need to focus across the major segments of banking. Most of the people in the room are going to be familiar with this. I don't need to go into detail. Other than to say, these will be targeted short courses where we get very deeply into the particulars of the segments shown here, because they sort of each have their own aspect of products, services, operations, processes, and the concept of the innovation challenge. So what are we doing? In plain English, there's four categories of courses. And the categories are important. I'll explain why. So on the top left, the notion about core technology courses. So the focus is on the technology and not the domain. I know it's not my phone, because I should find it. On the bottom left, the emerging. Now, right now, if you sort of read consultants speak all over the world, everybody says, oh, the emerging thing is cloud, mobile, social, and analytics. But actually, that's been something people have already been saying for about two or three years now. And a year from now, two years from now, sort of the conceptualization of what is emerging is going to have to move off that sort of standard consulting tag on. Uh, sort of a deeper understanding of issues like privacy, as an example. How people, not, you know, you can't just do analytics at 100,000 feet. You need to talk about how banks are going to integrate external information with internal information or things like that. So we'll get down to that level of specificity. The hybrid FSIIT, this is something we've really been working on at SMU for seven years now in the trenches through our MITB, our Master of IT and Business Financial Service Program. How do you integrate the understanding of the technology with the processes, the operations, and the change initiatives? And people on the technology side, and in other parts of operations who work closely with the technology side, you're involved in large groups, large budgets, cross-enterprise initiatives, and change initiatives. So there's a core management part where we're trying to give people the management skills to be part of these initiatives and to be effective parts of the teams that are parts of the initiatives. The point is, we need to do all four of these categories. We have the wiggle room, if you will, the freedom to sort of swap in what is exactly the course in one box versus the other. Right? Because that will be driven by the banks themselves, or to some extent the service providers, but to a large extent by the banks. So if a bank comes to us and says, we need X, and almost anything they're going to say is going to fit in this category anyway, will you do it for us? The answer is yes. So that's why we have specific courses laid out by topic, but for today's presentation, we're showing it to you in terms of the baskets. Uh, that's, that's really the more important way of how it's organized. Right. So no presentation is complete without a two by two matrix to explain something. So if you don't have a two by two matrix, you sort of haven't gotten the thing explained yet. But simply put, the first column, you're already in financial services. All right? The second column, you're not in financial services, but you want to be, or you need to be. The first row, you're an IT professional. The second row, you're not an IT professional. Now, there are a lot of people who do jobs, let me speak about that bottom, that bottom row. There are a lot of people who do jobs where maybe earlier in their career they weren't trained specifically in, in IT, but they work a lot with IT people, or the success of what they do depends on, just like you have IT people who bridge across with the business, there are a lot of people on the business side who, because of years of experience, have had to bridge across to the change initiatives, which always involve IT. So both those categories of people can benefit from, the, um, from what's going on here. And you know, I'm not going to go through every cell. You get the idea. So we're going to focus on working professionals as well as new grads who can potentially enter into the sector. All right? Stop there. 
Why do I choose FITA? I think there are two reasons. Because we're working with the national competency frameworks in an integrated way, working under the Institute of Banking and Finance, which is working under NAS, so the Financial Industry Competency Standards, and with NICF, which is the scheme that IDA has been developing for many years and is pretty widely applicable in the industry now. Okay. And sort of working at the intersection of these two. Now, some of you might be from the banks, and you'll say, really? How is a university, even a university that has spent a lot of time in the applied aspects of banking operations and technology, how are they ever going to know more about us to do this kind of training? Right? Reasonable thing. We'll never sort of out-detail the banks in terms of their knowledge of what they do. But here's what we can actually do better than the banks. We know how people learn. Our job is to really know how people learn. It is not just a question of saying, here is what today or yesterday's person does who does this job. Because when they get there tomorrow, it's not going to be that way. The details are going to change. So we have to have the details, of course. And we do that by working with the firms in the industry. A lot of you work with us, you know that we do that. And we use our own faculty and agile. But we have to put inside people's heads frameworks so they actually know how to think about this stuff and deal with uncertain situations. So we have to organize the knowledge into systematic and structured frameworks in a domain where there are no textbooks. All right? I can't go to like Finance 101 or Operations 101, right? Because there really are no standard textbooks on this side of banking. So in a way, we have to create the way people learn. We can do that better than the best, and we've been doing it, right? But it's the partnership of the expertise that's out there and sort of the incredibly important everyday minutia, and then putting it into structures so people know how to put it all together and can operationalize the knowledge and apply it to new situations where we can be a world leader in that technology. In fact, that's why, in a sense, we're running FIDA, because we already are here. Right. This just gives an example of topics, not the full set of topics, but examples of topics across those four categories that I said. And we have to get them specified. You know, some of them in a common way cut across as horizontals. Some of them execute a little bit differently once you're in each of these different boxes. Okay. Now, just a comment on this. If I hire you for cold storage, I can take you into a grocery store and say, the stuff comes in here at this doorway, and it sort of moves in here, and go look out on the shelves, and you can see where people check out. <coughs> you can walk the process. You can see it. You can form a mental model in your head. You cannot walk the banking process. It does not exist in physical form. It is non-trivial to get people in their own head, not just to understand what their job is, but to understand what the concept of flow is in the banking process. There's nothing to physically observe, just rooms of people sitting at desks and terminals, right? 30 years ago, it was easier to train people in banking processes because you could follow the forms. You could literally follow the paperwork. You cannot do that. So this issue of how do you get people to visualize transactions, flows, and processes so they can be part of teams and go to whiteboards and say, this is what's happening. All right? That's the kind of expertise that we have to have very specific in this domain, not, not generic, but very specific in this domain. We have to get participants to understand the linkages between concepts, systems, and processes you have to do this from sort of a hands-on. One of the metaphors we have had for years is, and most of you are familiar with the industry, so if I say this, you sort of, you know, in your head, get the image immediately. There's the screen, there's the world in back of the screen, and there's the world in front of the screen, right? 
The world in back of the screen is the data, you know, all the stuff that's moving through the systems. The screen is the system itself. And then the world in front of the screen is the real organization of people, right? And for most people, it's a little bit of mental gymnastics to sort of merge those three in their head just for their job, just for their job. And maybe for some jobs, you need to understand that a step or two in front is a step or two in back. But the IT people's job is to understand the job of everyone else and to know the whole chain, to know the whole load behind the screen, the screen, and in front of the screen. And let me tell you, we've been trying to do this for seven years. It is not easy, okay? But I would say we have a leading worldwide position in how to organize knowledge to be able to do that. At the end of the day, this all sounds fine and well, but we all know what happens when you launch real initiatives. It comes down to the people running it. Right? Very briefly, because I want to wrap up here, Professor Miller's lecture time is about finished. Right? Um, John Vaughan, Dr. John Vaughan is our head. Okay? He's our academic head, he's right here in the front row. John graduated college probably about the same year that I did, you know, so let's not go into that what year that was. He worked with um, HSBC for about 15 years in, at that time, what they affectionately called the MIS group, okay? And sort of did everything you would do in HSBC if, uh, you know, I think in those days you probably had to have a wider range of what you did. Today people are probably more specialized. Then he worked in five Asian countries. He got very deeply involved in Indonesia's sort of reconstruction after the financial collapse in 1997. And he just shared with us that the IMF pulled him out of HSBC to help with getting banks back on operational track in Indonesia. And then he had a whole new phase of his career working with IMF, uh, work with the World Bank, and with uh, the United Nations, working with banks in this region specifically to build up banking capacity in the developing nation, all right? So John's our academic director. He did a stint at um, NTU where he was the head of the MBA, including the track in banking and finance. Um, and then he did a, a, a practice-oriented doctorate when he was in the UK. So he has sort of wonderful bridging kinds of capabilities. Some of you might know Karen from the industry. She's done since at EBS, at OCBC, <coughs> in the consulting industry. And she teams with John on the um, sort of curriculum design. A really fascinating thing about FICA is that it is deeply integrated into the mainstream of SMU. It's housed within the School of Information Systems. Some of our <coughs> full-time faculty who are focused on banking technology and its integration with operations processes so forth are very strongly involved. Many of you, if you've been in the industry a long time, you'll know Enoch. He was actually the one, he was hired by one of the MAS employees back in 1998. Sort of one of the staff employees. I think his name was Tharman at that time. Okay. Really was hired by Tharman, right? And, and then he was deputy MD of MAS. And then Enoch actually was the one who started what is now known as the supervisory risk group in MAS. And he ran that for a number of years and then went on to do things in DBS. And he's been here for a number of years running our education training programs in this sort of banking tech and management area. <coughs> Patrick, some of you will know from the industry, he's been involved um, in uh, ANZ, UBS, CBS, and is still with the World Bank in Washington. So he's here working with us with the program too, in addition to doing executive level initiatives, in, a, in addition to the professionally oriented initiatives. So without going, there's a lot of information on this slide. I'm not going to go through the detail. But just to say, this box represents PICA. That's focused on professional level knowledge and competency. We're starting to run special things for executives because we train them in different kinds of ways. We've got what many tell us is the world's most established master's program for banking technology and its integration with processes and operations in the world. We have that base. We're even running at the um, undergrad program, special tracks in banking and technology. 
And then we're working with a number of banks on special projects that are part of the R&D and applied project ecosystem at SMU, uh, often focused with the School of Information Systems, but often branching out into other parts of the university as well. So FIDA plugs into this network in a real way, not just a PowerPoint way. And that's, that's it. This is my final statement that our, our mandate is to become a strategic asset for the financial service sector in Singapore. So it's not just a presentation here, it's a survival game. We understand this. We know that we can do some pioneering things that are innovative and effective in terms of getting people to learn and perform in the area of FSIC education and training. And we're shooting to become, and actually I think we are, but we're going to keep moving in the direction of being Asia's premier education and training provider focused on financial service IT. So my message is, help us. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Miller.